Hi, my name is Dane Christensen and I'm a documentary filmmaker. I use the Ronin 4D as my main camera on all the film shoots that I do. In this video, we're going to go through the Ronin 4D's camera system. Why you might ask? Well, I think knowing the menu system is an important part when considering which camera to buy. Because that menu system is how you interact with the camera and your camera is your tool to make your craft. If you can't figure out a setting quickly and easily, that's a big problem when on set. So let's go through the menu system on the Ronin 4D. It's a great system, well designed, but there are a few quirks that you need to know about in order to really make this camera sing. Let's get started. The Ronin 4D is quite unique in its menu system because there are five different ways to access the menus. First of all, you can use the controllers. You can also use the physical buttons on the camera body. You can use the physical buttons along the side of the mounted screen as well as just use the touchscreen. And finally, you can use the remote monitor to control every aspect of this camera system. It really is quite unique to have so many different ways to access the menus because this allows you to be very fluid and flexible in no matter which way you are using this camera. On the main screen, you can see all your important settings as well as change them by just simply tapping on them. So you have your exposure index, your iris, your shutter, your frame rate, all of which you can change just like so. As well as along the bottom, you have your ND filters, your white balance. You can change between record duration and time code, as well as your resolution. Along the side of the screen, you have your battery level, your storage medium, and remaining recording time on that medium. You have your gimbal status and speed. The icon of the Ronin 4D gimbal is your gimbal balance detection. It will change colors depending on how you're using a gimbal to let you know if your gimbal is out of balance or is overloaded. Underneath that icon, you have your autofocus manual focus switch. And if you enable tracking, the tracking switch will appear. The first tab is the recording tab, which has video, audio, and other settings. Underneath the video page, you have your image area, your recording codec, your resolution, your sensor frame rate, your storage media, your recording LUT, and this is important to note. Changing this will change the color space that is recorded into your files. So if I change it to Rec. 709, I will have that baked into my footage. So if I want a log look so I can color grade later, I'm going to choose D-Log. This is important because this will get a little confusing later underneath the display tab. You can change your camera index and reel count. And if we page over to the audio tab, you can change your audio source. Notice that you can change your channel one and channel two sources. The Ronin 4D does have built-in microphones for scratch audio, and you can change that input here. If you're plugging in external audio, make sure to change this to the three and a half millimeter mic on the left and for the right in order to have that recorded into your footage. And if we go down here to the settings page, you can change the image sharpness, noise reduction, add a record sound alert when you start recording, and enable the tally light. Now moving on to the display tab. Here you have your exposure assistant, so you can turn on zebra stripes, your waveform, your false color, and adjust those settings for each of those visualizations. In the focus assistant page, you can change the function of the physical peak button on the Ronin 4D controllers. You have focus peaking, focus magnification, or LiDAR waveform. You can also manually turn on focus peaking and then perhaps change the function of the physical peak button to, let's say, focus magnification. I notice that I'm switching often between focus magnification and focus peaking for the physical button, depending on what shoot I'm on that day. Underneath the monitor page, you can turn on a frame guide, its transparency, turn on a safety zone, put on a center marker, as well as change the monitor LUT. And this is important. Here, this monitor LUT will not change what is baked into your footage. This will just change what is displayed. So I want to be able to see a Rec. 709 color space when I'm filming, but I want the D-Log to be recorded into my footage. So here I'll select Rec. 709. And if I go back to my main image here, I can click off the LUT and see that it's recording in log. I'll turn it back on and go back into this menu system. You can add in your own looks here 
either through loading them on through a LUT file or choosing between here. If we go back to this monitor page, you can select that look here at the bottom. Now, that look is what will show up on your display. Under the User Settings tab, you can save your user profile settings and customizations. This is useful if you are moving in between several different Ronin 4D camera systems or you need to factor reset your camera. So you save your user profile onto an SSD before performing that factory reset. Under the Storage tab, this is where you can format your storage media. Under the Systems tab, here you can change the fan mode, the system time, your language, as well as perform a factory reset. I find that I access the Lens tab the most when I'm using my Ronin 4D. This is because of the focus settings that are underneath this tab. First of all, you have your autofocus mode. You can choose between autofocus or auto manual focus. Auto manual focus is the unique Ronin 4D feature where the camera will focus for you, but you can override it by just holding your thumb on the focus wheel. Now moving over to the ROI mode, this is where it gets a little confusing. So knowing these different modes is really important so that you are pulling your best focus and know how to use the camera to its fullest potential. In the ROI mode, you have first spot. This allows you to tap anywhere on the screen to pull focus, similar to other camera systems. The ROI mode wide has a wide field of autofocus. The camera will pull focus to the subject that is filling the most space in this rectangle. Now in the smart mode, it's both a combination of the spot and wide ROI modes. Here, the Ronin 4D will automatically switch between tracking a person to tracking subjects, depending on what it thinks is your intention with your focus. I find this useful, but not always reliable, so I prefer to be in the spot mode or the wide mode depending on my situation. With that said, you need to be in the smart ROI mode in order to use the smart tracking features that are unique to the Ronin 4D. In autofocus sensitivity, you only have three options. And unfortunately, there are no other specifications here. This will both change how fast the Ronin 4D recognizes a subject and how fast it pulls focus to that subject. So to use tracking on the Ronin 4D, you need to be either in the autofocus or auto manual focus modes. Now with the two switches on the left for the autofocus and tracking, you can use them independently of each other. However, the focus mode needs to be in smart. You can't use it just in spot and you can't use it just in wide. In order to use tracking, you must be in the smart ROI mode. You can click on the autofocus switch. Now the Rona 4D will be able to start autofocusing once you select the subject that you want to autofocus on because you're in the smart autofocus mode. So I click on the person in the frame, the outline turns green, now it's autofocusing to that subject. Now I can also just do the same thing for tracking. I click on the tracking switch on the left and now the Ronin 4D is tracking the subject. You can use these independently of each other now that you're in the smart ROI mode. You don't have to have autofocus enabled in order to use the tracking mode. With that said, as a reminder, you need to be in the smart ROI mode in order to use the tracking features. And like when the autofocus switch is turned on, you'll get an orange bracket around the subject that you'd like to track. If you select that orange bracket, it turns green, now the Ronin 4D is tracking. You can click on the touch screen in order to enable tracking or autofocus, or you can use the left controller on the Ronin 4D. So you never need to move your hands off the handle grips in order to toggle on and off autofocus or to even toggle on and off tracking and switching in between focusing and tracking subjects. It's really useful once you get the hang of it. So to summarize, in order to use autofocus, the autofocus switch needs to be turned on. However, in the smart ROI mode, the Ronin 4D will always be recognizing subjects with an orange bracket, ready for you to tap on them either with a physical button or a press on the screen to start focusing. The same goes for the tracking. 
the tracking switch needs to be turned on in order for the Ronin 4D to track a subject. Once in the smart ROI mode, you'll get an orange bracket around subjects that you either would like to track or to autofocus on, depending on which switches, autofocus or tracking, are on or off. Once in these modes, you can use the physical button on the handle grip to not only toggle on and off autofocusing and tracking, but also switch in between subjects. Underneath the calibration page, this is where you store your calibrated lenses. This is a page you should be very familiar with and you'll be accessing frequently as you change lenses or if you're using a zoom lens on your Ronin 4D. For example, I use the Tamron 28-75 E-mount lens on my Ronin 4D. It's a great lens and I really enjoy how light it is and it performs well with the gimbal. However, because it's a zoom lens, I have to calibrate each focal length that I would like to use on this lens with the Ronin 4D. So you can see I've calibrated the zoom lens at 50, 35, 28, and 75. I could add more calibrations if I would like. So if I move my lens to 35, I need to come in here to this page and tap on Tamron 35. Now if I go back to 50, I'll need to do the same thing here. This is important because you need this in order to pull focus properly, otherwise the Ronin 4D will get a little confused with how to operate the focus motors built into the lenses. So, for example, right now I have my zoom lens at the 50 millimeter focal length. I'm going to incorrectly use the Tamron 28 calibration that I have stored here. You can see here it focuses quite poorly. It's a little too fast and it's not corresponding correctly to a smooth focus that I would expect if I were pulling focus on the focus ring. If I go back to 50, you can see it jump because it's calibrated and see how much smoother it is when I pull focus. It's taking the full length of that focus and I'm able to be more accurate with my focusing. When you're using the incorrect lens calibration profile, the Ronin 4D is not controlling the focus motors in the lens very well and you get kind of a, a jumpy focus pulling experience. So get used to changing your focus calibration profile on the fly in the menu system and you'll get that smooth focus rack of capabilities. Perhaps it's a little annoying that you have to do this when using a zoom lens, but the easy use of the Ronin 4D easily makes up for this little quirk. Now, with that said, it's actually very easy to auto calibrate native lenses for the Ronin 4D. And native lenses for now include the DJI DL mount, the Leica M mount, and the Sony E mount. Future mount options are in the pipeline for the Ronin 4D, which is exciting. So I'm using the Tamron 28 to 75 on the Ronin 4D right now, and I am able to auto calibrate any of the focal lengths. It's quite easy to auto calibrate. Just type in what you want to call your lens profile calibration and click start calibration. And since this is a native lens for the Ronin 4D, it auto calibrates it and I don't have to go through the manual calibration process. It's that easy. And I can go through with this zoom lens and add any focal length, say 65, 40, 45, whatever I'd like to use on this zoom lens. And I just simply click auto calibrate and name it accordingly. Now if you do run into any issues and it doesn't auto calibrate or you're using a lens via an adapter or it's not officially supported, you can click on the manual calibrate and here you'll go through a step-by-step -step process to calibrate that lens. This is nice because really if you can get the lens onto the Ronin 4D you can calibrate it automatically or at least manually. And again in the pipeline the Ronin 4D will support multiple lens mounts in the future. For example, the Leica L mount. Underneath the stabilizer tab, you have settings that you may be familiar with from using the DJI Ronin gimbals. You can change your gimbal mode, the follow speeds, the pan speeds, and the tilt speeds, as well as the dead band for all those axes. And now you have also something similar for the joystick that's on the left controller of the Ronin 4D. And then you have the gimbal calibration page. Here you can enable push pan and push tilt, as well as auto-tune. 
I've noticed that I auto-tune almost after every lens swap on the Ronin 4D. The motors seem to be quite sensitive if they're not tuned correctly. The good news is it goes really quick. It's easy to access this setting and I'm up and rolling in no time. And then the final tab is your transmissions tab. Here you can have up to two monitors that are control monitors. That means that the remote monitor can control every aspect of this camera and you can put on the controllers and control all the settings on the Ronin 4D. You can also have broadcast mode and there's virtually no limit to how many broadcast monitors you have linked to the Ronin 4D. In broadcast mode, however, you do not have control over the menu settings on the Ronin 4D. So that's the menu systems on the Ronin 4D. It's a beautifully designed and easy to access menu system, but once you know how the menu system flows and which settings you'll be accessing most often, you'll be able to use the Ronin 4D to its max potential.